Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's work every Monday. He puts out a new issue of the Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN. He puts out updates when warranted. When you subscribe, like any newsletter at TFNN, folks, you subscribe. It's $97 for the month, okay? But you come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you don't like it. At the end of that 30-day period, you cancel. We'll refund that $97. You get the newsletter for a month. You also get a 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, what is behind the Tiger Forex Report. He breaks down the markets. He breaks down the variables that he looks at for the pairs. Um, it's a great service, folks. It's a great webinar. Check it out. And let's just jump into it as we got quite a day, Teddy. Good morning, man. Good morning. Where do you want to start? Let's True. start with the yen. What <laughs> yeah. do you think of the yen? As uh, I had to piece it together this morning as I woke up. So the Bank of Japan staying pat. Is that the deal? Um, well, they are right now. But um, we, we talk, we've been talking about this now for the past couple of months. You have a new prime minister and now you also have a new uh, Bank of Japan uh, chairman coming online in a couple of months. That's when they're going to do stuff. They're going to wait for the new guy to come in, most likely. There's no, they're in no hurry. They, it's not like they're in a hurry, you know, considering how long they've been where they have been, you know. Sure. So I mean, like, they're, but overall, I mean, this is something we've talked about. I mean, even my predictions for the year was, you know, the Japanese yen is going to be definitely probably a very strong currency versus the dollar, you know. So the, yeah. and the dollar index, like right now today, especially, you have all the currencies crushing the dollar. You know, I mean, you have new lows in the U.S. dollar, Swiss. You have new highs in the Australian dollar you know uh, US dollar I mean the pound I mean the pound especially like that balloon underwater rally today like going into those highs right now where it's at that's very impressive you know so and you got to remember that the euro it's really just fluttering that's the one that had been leading the charge on the dollar index for the past especially week going in today if you look at it it's just floating right below the, the highs that it hasn't been able to breach for the past few sessions, you know. So that's pretty much exhausted, I think, you know. And that shows that, you know, I, I told you that this is the year that you're going to see a lot of divergence. And I think you're going to start to really see that now. I mean, the yen was up very, uh, U.S. dollar yen was up very strong today. And then all of a sudden it fell apart, you know, because the, the market's buying into this reality that the, the Japanese are actually going to start doing something. Negative interest rates are, those days are going to be over. You know, so now they're not going to be as aggressive as our Fed or other central banks around the world. But that's irrelevant. The fact that they know that we know that they're coming come off their lows. That's a big deal for the global investment community because it's stronger for the Nikkei. You know, it's stronger for their bond market. You know, so that you're going to also have <clears throat> a lot of Japanese investment. You got to remember that Japanese invest globally. A lot of Japanese are going to be investing in their own markets, too, because they're going to expect to see a growth. For sure, you know, especially in the uh, the stock market there, you know, and also in their economy. I mean, their inflation is not nearly what we've been dealing with, but we've talked about that already for months about how, you know, where we have rampant inflation, things aren't like that everywhere in the world, especially in Japan. They actually are very isolated um, for the most part during 2022 and even 2021, you know, but now it's started, the global inflation is something they can't, that's, they're not insulated from that. And I think that's what you're seeing as far as where that inflationary growth is in Japan, you know, but as they, as the yen gets stronger, and I think it will versus most other countries currency pairs as well. Like, I don't think it's just going to be a U.S. dollar yen trade. I think you can take the yen versus most currencies and over the next six months, especially after this new uh, 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 Bank of Japan chairman comes in, I would not doubt that the market itself is going to be betting on the stronger yen, period, you know. Yeah, I mean, you look at the chart. I had it up earlier, and I just pulled it up right now. The the yields, you know, the ten year yield of Japan versus U.S., Germany, U.K., Australia, just remarkable that it's sitting basically at negative prices still. Um, as we are, even Germany above two percent, but we're chopping around as we know about three point five percent. The rest of uh, those countries, just remarkable when you take a look at it in terms of where we are. What did you think of the numbers this morning? Just because we got some retail sales, we got some producer prices, um, declining mm -hmm. retail sales, producer prices dropping as well. What did you think of those tying into, obviously, the move in the dollar, man, um, kind of influencing some of the action for sure? Okay, well, the, the drop in retail sales, I think that's pretty easy to figure out. I mean, we've had so much inflation going on over the past two years. People are out. I have to say, like, I think people are pretty much exhausted, not just from the inflationary environment. I think their pocketbooks are as well. I mean, I remember the, over the, how the holidays were. People were out, 
but they were really only out really on like Christmas and Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You know, there wasn't like, I mean, there was, the weekends would have some business at the shopping malls, but overall people weren't really out, you know? And like this past Monday, we had Martin Luther King Day. You would think with the kids out of school and whatever, like the, there would be, people would be out running around doing stuff. And I have to say, I went out to Office Max at on like 11 o'clock on Monday to go uh, pick some stuff up. And I pull up in the parking lot, and there is there was nobody there. The Best Buy next to it. I mean, there was like no cars in the parking lot. And I'm looking around like, okay, I can see where people are sleeping in, but there was nobody. And all day it was sure. like that. There was no traffic, you know. So people aren't going out and running around like they're not aimlessly doing that. And I think also that their spending habits are starting to change, you know. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist when you go to the gas pump, you know. And I think people are afraid of higher gas prices, and that's coming as well, you know. I mean, so – and. You look at their expenses, you know, you can say that, you know, the Fed was saying inflation was transitory months ago. Now we know that they don't say that anymore. But the reality is, is the average person, I think, is under a lot of strain, you know, and especially look at all the people that probably bought cars in the last year and a half, too. Yeah, they're, tough. They're, I mean, you want to talk about getting crushed, you know. Hopefully I mean, you didn't buy a Tesla, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> a Tesla, that price how, reduction. How that's a, that's really yeah. what I'm talking about, folks. That price reduction. Sure. How about that one? Right. Um, I was. Right? Reading, Absolutely. I was reading a story about the poor people, folks, that bought it over the last couple of months. One guy was supposed to take delivery in January, Teddy, and they called mm -hmm. him in December and said, hey, guess what? We can actually get you that car December uh, right around Christmas. He said, oh, fantastic. He took delivery. And then they lowered the price in January when right. he was actually going to get the car. And they're just like out of the woodwork. Uh, right. But yeah, cars, everything. Let's let's jump mm -hmm. uh, to crude if we can. You talked about gas yes. prices, man. We're we're above 82 bucks as I talked to you, up almost a buck 75. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was talking about earlier in the program, part of the numbers, the reason why they're coming down are gas prices already versus last month. We're up 21 cents versus this time last month. And it feels like we're almost even on our way even higher than that. But that's the number in terms of where we are already almost 25 cents higher. What do you think of the mm -hmm. price of crude? Uh, well, I think the price of crude is going higher. We have a buy signal that was triggered yesterday after the clo uh, with the yesterday's close. You have a reverse head and shoulders formation. So I think we have a solid base bottom. We set a low in December, and I think that was the he uh, the head, and now we're going to start trending higher. We hit the uh, – you know, this last um, pullback, excuse me, with this higher move low, you know, if you think it as far as like in a wave theory, you had your first wave that began. We have the first retracement. Now we have we're in wave two. The wave three this is going to be the big wave. And that should take us definitely back, I would say, around the $90 mark or even more within the, probably the next few weeks. What's you know, your take, Teddy, on on – on China in general, I know there's a million impact, you know, variables that go into crude, especially, but a lot of the talk about China. What's your take of China, you know, open it back up? Because now all the rhetoric is, you know what, they, they might be over the hump already. And, and I'm surmising, of course. But what, what's your take on how China comes into that crude price? Um, well, I think short term, that's definitely a demand. Uh, uh, for, I mean, for, that should drive demand, I would think, you know, at least in the short run. Yeah. You know, especially because, you know, I mean, Green New Deal is something that the Chinese really don't care about. <laughs> you no. know, so sure. me, electric cars. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. You know, well, Teddy, so, uh, I appreciate the conversation, the time as always, man. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, man. You have a great week. We'll talk to you Wednesday. Take care. Thank you. Okay, take care.